Hey everyone, in this video I will be going over how you can set up your very own Jitsi video calling service on a Ubuntu server. Uh, this is for people who are low to mid technical, I mean you're going to need to be a little bit familiar with the terminal, but for the most part this is very low technical skill required. Jitsi is a fantastic platform for doing video calls. Uh, if you're running a business, you know, having that your domain in the when, when somebody goes to meet with you or something is really powerful. I've run network events off of it. It's just it's a great service. Um, I also use a different version of this, uh, but I, I use it in to integrate into apps. Like if I have a client that wants to use Jitsi in their application. I've, I've done that before. All that to say is that it's a great service and uh, you should be very excited for, for what we're going to be building here today. SSH is how you can connect to another computer remotely. It's a open source protocol, been around for forever. I personally prefer keys. They're much more secure than using the password option. You can use the password if that's what you're more comfortable with. Um, there's some you can ask GPT how to, to set up your SSH keys, but it's, it's really just a couple commands. It's going to be different if you're on Windows or Linux, but uh, yeah, so get your key in. You can add new SSH key and just paste it up here. Um, and then you go down here to naming your droplet. Let's just name it Jitsi1. This really doesn't matter. It's um, only for your convenience. Uh, and then I'm going to hit the create droplet button down below. Uh, I'm just going to wait for that to... Okay, now that the server is set up, now what we're going to do is we're going to want to copy this um, this IP address, and we're going to need this in the future, so do take note. Uh, for those of you who don't know, an IP address is very similar to a phone number, where you say Eric has the phone number of 784 blah 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 blah. The internet works in the same way, but instead of like an old school phone book, it's called DNS. And what, how it works is that you put in the domain. So in this case, it'd be vasker.tech. But for your business, of course, it's going to be something different. And then when you type that in, the, the, the computer is going to know, oh, this domain is pointing to this IP address. Anyways, um, so yeah, let's, let's take that IP address. And then we're going to head over to the terminal, which I realize you guys can't see. One second. Do, 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 do. All right. Now let us go and SSH into the server. Now this is going to be different again, depending on how you set it up. If you decide to go with passwords, or if you would decide to go with um, something else, it's going to, it's going to be a little different. But the general process is the same. So to uh, SSH, if you're using Windows, you're going to need to install something called Putty. Again, you can ask GPT about that. Um, if you're on Win Linux, uh, the, the best operating system, I'm totally not biased. <laughs> um, it's going to look something like this. So you just type in the SSH keyword and then root at and then uh, paste your IP address. So in this case, it is this IP address. Um, we hit enter. Um, yes. Now, if you chose to go with the password, this is where it's going to prompt you to put in your password. Um, it's going to give us a little message. Awesome. So now we are in the server you just created. This is a uh, pretty cool step. I always feel like a hacker whenever I, I gain access to, to my own hardware. So uh, make sure you don your hoodie. Anyways, uh, this is not a necessary step that we're going to do next, but it's something that I really like because it just makes your life a lot easier. And that's installing a utility called Fish. So we're just going to do sudo apt install install fish it's gonna do its little thing it's gonna ask you hit y for yes um and then it is going to install fish which is awesome because fish is a great command line utility that just makes it easier for you to complete commands, go through history of old commands. So if you, you mess something up, you don't have to retype the whole thing. It's just, it's a huge time saver. And even for something simple like Jitsi, it's, I, I recommend it on just about any Linux machine you're, you're playing and using the terminal from. All right, so now that we got this set up, first thing is you always update, sudo apt update. This is just gonna update the repositories. Um, all right, next thing we're gonna do 
is install um, apt transport HTTPS. Uh, this is one of the programs that is going to be needed for Jitsi to do its magic. So app transport HTTPS. Uh, it's already installed. Fantastic. Some of these are already come pre-packaged, but it's always good to run these um, installation commands just in case. Uh, Reposit. Guess I just can. I can never spell when I'm recording. Uh, repository universe. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. And that's just going to add. Um, it's going to add that repository to our command line so we can just easily, or sorry, a package manager so we can just easily install it. All right, then we're going to update. So this is going to, um, this is going to update the package list with the uh, universe package. Next, we're going to add our domain to the configuration file. How we do that is, uh, so take, for example, I don't know what domain you have or you're planning on using. Typically, if it's yourbusiness.com is your domain, then you can do something that's called a subdomain and we just tack on a, a prefix to that, call a subdomain. And to do that, it, let's just say um, sudo host name ctl set host name. And then this is where you're gonna replace it with your your domain or your subdomain. So in this case, let's go with tutorial.vasker.tech. Excellent. And then you're going to run sudo nano. Nano is a command line editor, um, slash etc slash hosts. Anyways, so it's gonna look like this. And you just don't don't bother about any of this other stuff. All you need to focus on is this line, it says 127.0.0.1 at localhost. Get your IP address and just paste it um, paste it here. It's already copied to my clipboard, so I'll just do control shift V and that will paste that IP address and then you do a space and then the name of the, uh, the domain name that you're gonna use. So in our case, it's gonna be tutorial.vasker.tech. And save that, which is control O and to leave it, it's control X. I just realized I recorded the past three minutes while focused on the wrong part of the screen. So we're going to do this again. Um, <laughs> you can follow along. I'm linking a tutorial that uh, we're following today down below. It's on the official Jitsi docs. So you can copy paste these commands because they're a little bit too long for you to type out. And you'll probably get something wrong. So to start, we're going to go to, this is the add ProCity package repository. ProCity is just one of the dependencies that Jitsi needs so it can run properly. Uh, and we're just going to uh, copy and paste the commands for Ubuntu 22. Do not do it for 18 um, as a mistake that I've made many times before. Uh, and it is really annoying. All right, so this first command, this is just in, um, fetching a... A key just to verify our installation, everything is correct so that we don't accidentally download malware. Uh, then we run sudo apt install Lua uh, 5.2. Lua is just a programming language. Don't worry, you don't have to actually program in it. This is just, again, another, we're just getting all the dependencies so that Jitsi can run properly. All right, then we actually add the keys for the Jitsi repository. So we're gonna do that. And then copy paste the next one. Fantastic. We sudo apt update, which is going to uh, essentially add these packages to our um, apt uh, package manager repository thingy. Uh, I know, super technical term right there. Um, and then we're going to copy all the firewall rules. So um, you can just hit the copy button on the site and just do the same thing, control shift V. This is what this does is it just allows, it allows different ports. So depending on the type of application, it requires a different port. And the port is just like a, a way that uh, computer programs and apps can communicate with each other. I'm not gonna go into the weeds. You can ask GPT or do some research on it. it it's, it's really cool stuff, but uh, not important here. Essentially just hit enter 
uh, today we're just being a little script kitty. Um, and just hit yes. Uh, it's not going to disrupt your SSH connection because we didn't. The, it's just saying this if we were to disallow uh, anything from port 22, which is for SSH. We're not doing that today. So you can hit yes with uh, confidence. After this, now we're going to need to go over to our domain provider and set up the domain to point to our IP address that we just created. So I will see you over at, uh, for this domain, it's on AWS. So I will show that to you. Again, if you're using Namecheap, which is probably more common, it's very similar. You're just gonna go to advanced DNS settings and then create an A record and then paste the IP address in that A record. I'll show it to you in a couple seconds with, with AWS, but just know, no matter who you go with, Google domains, Squarespace domains, Namecheap, it doesn't matter. They're all gonna be the same. All right, once you've navigated there, uh, you'll probably see something like this. Of course, I'm, I'm blurring out all the uh, all our domain records because that's a little sensitive information. Uh, but um, yeah, essentially, whenever you go to your domain record registrar whatever it is you're going to see a list of domain records and these are just if you, again if you go thinking back to the analogy of like the ip addresses and uh dna it's just like the old phone book system and this is this is just like one of those entries saying greg is um you know greg is number is 7821 i don't know uh i don't i'm i'm a zoomer i don't i don't make phone calls um so uh, you're gonna want to wherever the button is uh for for aws it's um it's this create record button again yours is going to be different um so yeah just hit that create record whatever it looks like and then for where it says subdomain or it might just be blank if you wanted to create a record just for your, your base domain, you'd hit an at symbol. Uh, but because we're actually using a subdomain called tutorial.vasker.tech, that's what we're going to use. And it's going to be an A record, uh, which is just says it's going to be an IP address. Um, you're going to head back over to your Jitsi or wherever you find your IP address, copy it. And then we're just going to paste it in, hit create record. They all right, now that we've done all the setup, now it's for the moment we've all been waiting for, and that is the actual uh, installation of Jitsi. All right, let's go. Uh, so yeah, I'll just, I'll type it out for you. So it's sudo apt install, and then just Jitsi dash meet. And then we're gonna hit yes. And this is when it's gonna do its installation process. Now, this is gonna take some time, uh, like a minute or two. Um, and it's going to have these little pop-ups and we're just going to, I'm just going to walk you through these answers. All right. So, uh, what is the domain? So this is just what you typed in. So it'll be tutorial dot fasker dot tech. Um, and then that's just going to keep doing its thing. Um, I've noticed it tends to stall like the 40% mark. Again, if it hangs there for a minute or two, don't worry. It's just, it's doing a lot of stuff in the background. So be patient, you know, maybe watch a YouTube video like this one. Uh, um, or, okay, uh, here's the next pop-up. So you're gonna want to do Let's Encrypt and Certificates. This is super important. I, to this day, I sometimes get issues with SSL certificates and stuff. And essentially all this is, is it's a service that makes it so that when you visit your this domain it's going to be https instead of http and send a scary warning to people which we obviously don't want so also this is just more secure so i uh, hit that it's going to do let's encrypt um and then this is where you're going to put in your your email address um so i'll just put in business one info at basker.tech which you can email us anytime with any questions or um it's got cool apps you want to make um boom all right, and then um, do you want to do this, Jazz? Jazz is it's a super awesome service. I use it to embed meetings into applications. We don't need that right now, uh, unless you do want to put it in telephony. But for now, we're just going to focus on just basic, um, super basic implementation of this. And once this gets done, then we will be able to test it out. And I'll see you there. All right, that was a. Uh, that was a mistake. I, I completely lied. So it was not working. Um, what was happening was when I went and followed these 
this procedure. I've had this happen many times before and I found a bypass. So what happened was I visited the site and gave me the, the error that it was only encrypted in HTTP and it didn't trust the HTTPS certificate, um, which is just a lot of techno jargon. Uh, essentially, um, the, the browser was not trusting our, our, our site. So I found a uh, bypass for that because uh, it's a super annoying bug and sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. So this is a surefire way to make sure that when you set up your Jitsi server, it will always be encrypted. So what you're going to do is you're going to run, I again, I already ran this command, so um, it's going to install for me, but uh, it's already installed for me, but it, it should install for you. Sudo apt install, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do... Um, we do certbot python3 certbot-ngx. Certbot just is a way of manually signing the certificates and creating them so that it is nice and secure. So, I mean, for us, it's already installed because, again, I already did this. And then all we have to do is, I'm just making sure I follow the right commands. All right, so then all I did was then did sudo certbot-nginx. Um, spelled n-g-i-n-x i know it's a silly name to pronounce it dash d and then the name of your dot tag i already ran this command so i'm not going to do it but it's just going to give you uh some prompts actually you can see them right here so it's going to um so it's going to ask you for the domain and it's going to ask you for an email address for security notices and stuff um so just put your email then um, and then it's going to ask, you know, do you agree with the terms of service? Again, just say yes. Then it's going to ask if you are willing to receive emails. Uh, this is just like their newsletter. You can, if you want to, I already, I have so many domains and stuff I'm managing. I'm already subscribed. Um, and then it's going to add it to certificate to your configuration file. And so now when you visit it, if this should resolve it. And as you can see, when we visit tutorial.vasker.tech, uh, you will see this site right here. Uh, this is a test meeting I did before. Uh, we're just going to delete that. Um, and so, yeah, we're ready to go. You can just type in whatever name you want to, to call your meeting. Meeting one, the name with the name of a client. It really doesn't matter. You hit start meeting and then it'll show up this little screen and, uh, you know, you have access to your camera and everything. Hit join meeting and we're here. Excellent. So we've done it. We've made our own uh, self-hosted video calling service. It's online and you can start, you know, pasting links in, in meeting invites. You can start having calls with your team. Uh, again, wonderful service. I love it. And if you need like three, four or five people, all you have to do is just go to your, your digital ocean, um, do upsize. You're going to have to shred off the computer and then you can choose from any of these, these options. And when the meeting's over, you can just scale it back down. Uh, this is what I would do when I had to run networking events is I would, I'd, I'd set it out. Normally I have one that's always right in the background. That's like, you know, the $6 tier. And then when I have, you know, maybe 15, 20 people show up, Hey, I might, I might even go for something crazy like the $50 tier, but I'm only going to use it for, uh, you know, a, an hour tops, an hour, two hours, and then I can just scale it back down right afterwards. So anyways, I hope this was useful to you. Hope you found something interesting. Again, if you want to say thanks, you can, and you want to follow along, you can uh, use the affiliate link for DigitalOcean. If you want to use another service, please feel free to use that service. Um, and if you want to have an app that you want to be built or, you know, service or something along those lines, uh, reach out to, to us because uh, we love building cool stuff and helping other people build cool stuff. Uh, and uh, I guess that's that's all the plug I'm going to give right now. But anyways, uh, have a fantastic day 